Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for, uh, for all coming out here too, today. Um, actually, there's something that, that uh, I want to tag on to what Shane just said, is that um, you know, Amazon is, uh, has as his motto, not just Amazon Web Services, but also Amazon the retailer, to be, uh, to be the Earth's most customer-centric company. And, and probably it'll come back in my presentation as well. We, we proud ourselves that we are in very close contact with our customer and have our roadmap being driven by direct feedback from our customers. Um, and whether that is actually current customers or potential customers, uh, and I would urge you uh, today to actually give us feedback, um, both in terms of what you would like in terms of services, new services, new features, things that we're doing well, things that we're doing bad, but really give us that feedback because that really drives the way that Amazon does, does development. And, and we'll get back uh, more into that a little bit later. Um, my presentation will be as close to a sales pitch as that you're going to get to today. Uh, I apologize for that on forehand. Yeah, there will be some technical content in, in that as well, and I hope to give you a bit of an idea of uh, the kind of things that we've done in the past year, mainly. Um, also focusing on a few new areas that, that, we've, uh, that we've launched in the past year, for example, spot pricing, and go a bit into detail about how is it actually that our customers are using it, a bit around compliance and things like that. Uh, and given that I've been going around the world talking to many CIOs, there is a, uh, I'm kind of summarized sort of the strategies that I see CEOs take um, when, when they are considering cloud or when they're adding cloud to their toolbox. So, um, but I'll start off first a little bit for those of you who are actually really new to, uh, to AWS to talk a bit about you know, our business strategy uh, behind this. And because you, you may actually ask yourself, why is a, uh, why is a bookshop doing this? Yeah, and, um, to be honest, you know, and, and this may be mainly because from our customer-centric point of view, customers have always used this as just as a retailer. But in reality, Amazon has always been a technology company. Yeah? Imagine, if, look at all of the different pieces on the Amazon website, and you'll see that everything there is driven by technology. Yeah? Our, all our recommendations, which is something, for example, we've done from the beginning, now these days is actually being classified as big data. But in essence, we were, 10 or 15 years ahead of that large stream of innovation that is actually now also being used by many, many younger businesses as well as uh, large corporations. So Amazon is a technology company at heart. And when we went into our second business, which is the seller business, on one hand that is because we allow third parties to sell products on the Amazon website, but also we have, and that may not be something well known, we have an enterprise services business where we provide a platform for some of the world's other largest e-commerce operations to run on. For example, Target, Marks and Spencers, Mothercare, Timex, a whole range of these, uh, of these very large e-commerce operations run on exactly the same platform. So that platform is actually much larger than what Amazon.com requires. And so for many years, our, our biggest technology challenges was around scale and driving scale and actually developing technologies for that because most commercial technologies could not serve us. And, and, there's not, and I'm not, won't blame vendors for that because Amazon scale is so outworldly, is so far beyond what most other enterprises require that you know, it was just not in the specifications for those products as they were developed. So Amazon had to build a whole um, practice around building really large scalable systems and also use that kind of in a form that we could drive innovation internally. Yeah, that we could quickly have, take new ideas and, and uh, bring them to market, do A-B testing and see whether our customers like that. And so all of these pieces together delivered technology for us that we started to realize was, um, was very valuable for others to use as well. And just like that we've done with other technologies within Amazon, for example, we've opened up our fulfillment centers for others to use. You can put your packages in the Amazon Fulfillment Center and then use a web services API to ask those packages to be shipped to your customers. You do not need to sell on Amazon.com for that. We really opened up our core competencies there for others to use. And so we did the same thing with this tech technology because we believed that there was a whole range of, uh, of creative young businesses out there or potential creative young businesses out there 
that could benefit from this kind of scalable te 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 technologies. And, and to be honest, you know, when we really started off with this, we were really targeting uh, the more innovative side of the market. Really thinking about that there was this, this kid in a, in a dorm room of uh, university, Technical University of, of Sydney with the idea for the next Google or for the next Amazon. And that the only thing that he or she would be holding back was not having access to a really scalable infrastructure. Not only the fact that they could off the, get off the ground because everybody could take hosting. Yeah? But when you would be popular, that then suddenly you had to grow in a very cost-effective manner. Yeah, five years ago, startups required $5 million to get off the ground. Yeah, sort of in that range. These days, $50,000. Yeah, that's all you need to get started. And I think that is the big change in the whole business landscape that we want to, 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 to drive. And so that has led to what we now know as the Amazon Web Services, our infrastructure business. And uh, as uh, Shane already, or uh, Simone already mentioned, hundreds of thousands of companies are using that at this moment uh, from around the world. So as much as that, as a technologist, I like to do a deep dive on all of the different pieces that make up the web services and all the scale and, and reliability features and all these kind of things that, we, uh, that, that, that I really love. I think actually cloud is not defined by that technology. Technology can be used in many different forms. And there's many precursors for before cloud that were wonderful technologies as well. I think cloud is defined by its benefits. Yeah? And benefits mainly need to be uh, sort of business style benefits. So first thing that cloud really needs to do, it needs to lower your cost. Yeah? And both in two ways. One way by eliminating capital, so you do not need to um, you know, open up your wallet before you actually can start using these services. And the second thing, it needs to reduce your operational cost. And what I mean by that is that you need to use these, the, the pure pay-as-you-go and the on-demand features of this service such that you can really reduce cost and moments that you do not need to use these resources. So that's what we call elastic. Yeah, things can grow and can also shrink. And actually, often we think about scalable systems as stuff that can only scale, that has to scale up, that has to grow bigger. But important for scalable systems is that it also should be able to scale down. Because if you can scale it down at moments that you do not require that capacity, you will get most of your cost savings out of it. And in the last presentation today, um, John Jenkins will show how much that actually means for a company like Amazon.com. Yeah, he will show you some of the graphs of traffic on Amazon.com and how much in an old style system you would need to overscale yourself just to deal with the maximum traffic. Most of our customers actually come on board with an idea around this cost picture. Yeah, the cost picture is really attractive. But when they are around for a while, they will all claim that increasing agility is actually the reason why they, why they are in the cloud. The fact that they no longer are constrained about thinking about resources. Yeah, that you can no longer have to wait for procurement to actually deliver these resources for you. Yeah, and the fact that you can really deliver products increasingly faster. And that's not only important for young businesses, but for example, if you look at, um, look at how a typical product cycle was in the enterprise. Yeah, it's in general, first of all, product cycles themselves often run a decade or more, but the product development might take years. And to compete these days as an enterprise, you need to become more agile. And you need to move more into you know, what, what Amazon.com of this world have done in being able to have a product cycle of years, but a development cycle of months. Yeah? The increasing competition in the marketplace, the abundance of products, and, and the increasing customer control over you know, which products they like and not, has made that everything needs to be more agile that you need to be able to react very quickly. And cloud helps com customers with that. And of course, the, the removing heavy lifting is sort of the core piece of, of what cloud is all about. Yeah? If it doesn't differentiate you, you should actually not be spending your effort on it. Yeah, and this is actually so, sort of what Nick Carr in his earlier uh, presentations about IT doesn't matter, in reality meant. Yeah? 
if it does